explaining the location, keying the location of all the terms that are, the, the lo locational terms that are used. Um, and in relation to that, if I could just make the point that the term town centre is used very loosely throughout this document. Sometimes it's called town centre environment, Mr Chairman, sometimes it's called town centre. Uh, we don't use the term generally central business district, uh, but I think that that needs to be clarified right throughout the doc document. If you're talking town centre environment district plan mm -hmm. or whether you're talking CBD. <clears throat> And that relates very much to the first paragraph. Um, We've tried to stick to just the term town centre uh, simply because the study area is a little bit wider than just the commercial uh, CBD. Um, but certainly we do use the difference between town centre when we're talking in the general context and we do refer to town centre environment when we're talking under the district plan. So we can go through and just check the consistency of how we use that. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And if I could just uh, point out that it would be helped with a, a map that shows the, you know, the dotted lines, the total Study boundary, area. because many people um, reading this may not know the exact location of the Tongariro domain. Um, it takes in Riverside Park, which takes in the amphitheatre. Uh, and I'd just like to make the point that the ETA needs to be on that map as well, or on an additional map. No, that's fine. That's why I made the comment that um, we need to keep it as simple and when I said treat us all like dummies, that wasn't a derogative statement. No. That is, and, and, and that's how, you know, that's where the confusion arises out with the public. Myself, I understand Mr Gibbs because I've been listening to him for nearly 10 years and I'm gradually getting a grasp of the information, aren't I, Councillor Hickley? Absolutely. And, and that's where the confusion arises out there in the public. You know, let's try and keep it as simple and draw pictures and so we people can, can understand. We can do a very dry base study yeah. area map showing yeah. all the key. And just for example, Mr Chairman, going on now to page 9, yes. on the, the end of the first paragraph and the beginning of the second paragraph, you've got a very loose statement, the commercial areas. Um, that sort of thing, I think, needs to, be, needs to be tightened up. I think you mean the CBD. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Alright, we're going to Actually, those flags look lovely there. Are we going to put up the, a new photo of the new flags out there? In fact, I had someone say to me in Turangan the other day they thought there was a optrician's uh, conference on in Taupo. And I looked at them and walked on and said, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Well, I drove along the lakefront reserve and all I could see was these round circles looking like glasses looking at me. They're lifesavers. That's because they're beside the water, see? Yeah, right um, and, um, so my question is with regards to that photo, are we going to keep that photo or are we going to change it with our and, and new eyesight jobs? Mm -hmm. Mr Marshall at the back seat, so really laughing. He thinks it's Most funny. happy to take a new photo. Okay. Yeah, Mr Chairman, I'd just like to compliment the staff on these two pages. I think they're excellent. Um, I actually like that photo because it's got some heavy traffic in it. Um, I think that, that's to. the whole point. Mm. But anyway, uh, the point I'd like to raise is um, the photography throughout the document is outstanding. Yes, um, right. And in the last paragraph on page 10, yeah. I think we decided that we weren't going to create just one community gathering place. We were going to create community yeah. gathering places. It's just a minor yeah, thing. That's All right. <clears throat> page 11. I hope uh, Councillor McKell and I are not the only ones who are going to be doing all the talking today. So do I. <laughs> uh, so do I. I don't think we're going to get our way there, boss. <laughs> well, that's life, I suppose. Yep. Life in the first line. Number 11. Anything on 11? No? 12? Councillor. Just to show you that oh, I am smiling. <laughs> It's those well, little round things that you were talking about. Yeah. Um, on um, the second paragraph, um, where we talk about attracting a skilled workforce and promoting ongoing growth in the visitor industry, it was always my uh, um, belief that we work simply uh, that we were attracting a skilled workforce and promoting ongoing growth, yes. not just particularly to the visitor industry. I would agree with that. I mean, you can say including the visitor industry, but I don't believe it should be just the visitor industry. 
That's fine. We had we had tried to pick it up by, by suggesting the skilled workforce was the permanent population type mm -hmm. growth of town, and then you've got the visitor. But that's fine. We can just stop mm -hmm. it growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you could put example visitor industry. Yeah. But you're right. We're not. We're never singling out just visitor industry yeah. over yeah. anything else. Have you got that? Yeah. Councillor Yeah, thank you. On again on page twelve under Topo's challenges, developing a town centre that is livable, I find rather odd. Livable is a very wide term. It's not just applied to the residential area. It's about also um, being somewhere <coughs> and being livable. Um, so it's a fairly wide term. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a lot of people <coughs> living there in a residential sense. But I suggest that perhaps you find another word. Mm. You have another word in mind. I can certainly look at my little thesaurus and pull out one, um, but I just think livable is actually not really appropriate in that we sense. We use it in our LTCCP we'll as livable places, so um, it is a term uh, used quite a bit now uh, for people to just... To, whenever you're creating a place... You make it livable for whatever purpose you're creating it for. You haven't convinced me, <laughs> if I, I may say so. I, I, I've, got, I've got all day. <laughs> yeah. all got all day. Games, I think it's like that word public realm, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's standard throughout the world. And you, Are you telling me that livable is a standard planning term that's used? So if it is, well, let's it's stick with it. a term in vogue, that's yes. for sure. Okay, mm. just, uh, and then I think Councillor Down had his hand up. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, when this document was written first, or when we were starting this structure plan, we were in far more buoyant times than what we're in now. And I just wonder whether um, the first paragraph on page 12 actually reflects the current situation. Um, I think people are more mobile. Um, I don't think many choices necessarily relate to the majority of the population in this district. I think they have choices, but they don't necessarily have many at the moment. I just think it's a bit, a bit um, over the top. Um, to, to just reflect the reality of the economic environment that we're in at the moment. Um, I think we were more referring to people, not actually necessarily Taupo people, but nationally people have a lot of choice at where they may wish to uh, live and work now. Mm. And that's come about through the automobile age and a number of other areas, so that we are now competing as, pl as a place to live and visit uh, up against many other urban areas. And that's what we meant by there are many choices available uh, when it comes to where to live, start business or holidays. So that was the context of what so we So you're meant. not talking about the many places within the Taupo district. You're talking about Many places the whole of New Zealand. within the country. Yes, Can so I make a positive suggestion good. instead of the word more? Yep. And competitive choices are available. I'll leave it to you guys. Councillor Downer, did no. you have a hand up? Okay. Um, and going on to the next part of that. Yep. Um, under the Taupo's current strengths, uh, third to bottom bullet point under Taupo's current strengths, Plenty of open space through the wider town centre or the town centre environment, but in the town centre itself, in terms of the CBD, there are not a lot of open spaces. So I don't know what you mean by that, so can you just make it a little bit clearer, please? Yeah, I, I guess through you, Mr Chair, um, that will be helped by the definition of the town centre, which we'll do earlier, as we discussed. Um, but that definition of the town centre will include the Tongariro domain, which is obviously a very sizeable area of open space. Okay. Thank you. And the last sentence there under Taupo's challenges, I um, I don't want to be rude, but I think it's sort of woolly woofter language. What actually do you mean? Building resilience to meet changes in lifestyle and technology and the economy. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure you know what you mean, but could you just perhaps put it in more definitive terms? All right, page 13. Does anyone else, Mr Chairman? <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, I just make the point that this is a policy document, so we, you know, we're going through this process. Yeah, I've tried to tell people in there that I've, this is my fourth or fifth one that I've done, and this is how we do them. So you bear with us if you can't stand the pace. Get out of the race. 
Councillor Kelly. Uh, under land use, Mr Chairman, I presume you're talking about, in the last part of the sentence, urban environmental values. Otherwise, it's extraordinarily broad. Or are you? I mean, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Environmental values people can write books on. What specifically do you mean? Because I think this is in the urban area, so it probably is urban. It was, it was certainly meant in its most holistic sense, I believe, in that the, in that the activities that are undertaken in the urban environment, um, be it the discharge of stormwater or the discharge of air pollutants, affects not just the urban environment but the wider environment. The, um, the discharge of stormwater, for example, from the industrial areas might have the potential to get into the upper Waikato River and then have flow and effects downstream. So we were certainly trying to take as holistic an approach as we possibly could, given that these are very high-level structure plan goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Under public space, going back to what we spoke about earlier with um, many public spaces, then we have here functional public spaces from sheltered arcades through to a civic square. Several public spaces <coughs> in one specific <coughs> civic square. We've got yes, that should well, be. We've got a range of safe and functional public spaces from sheltered arcades through to civic square. So it recognises that there are different types of spaces. Mm. In and it the should town be centre. plural rather than singular. Yep. Where? Civic square. You are so saying a civic square. What we're looking at is is areas that can be used in different ways. I think we spoke about that earlier. Public spaces again. So I think I can see the confusion there when Mr Carroll is frowning. No, we, we, have a, we have a particular thing on Civic Square or Civic Heart. Civic Square and Civic Heart, uh, are they one and the same are you talking about? Well, as far as we're aware we've only got one public space, one square, so to speak, which is surrounded by civic facilities. Um, the piazza that we've talked about on Robert Street won't be a civic square because it won't be surrounded by civic facilities. I, I guess that's the approach we've taken in terms of drafting. Well, does that answer your question, Councillor? No. Councillor Well, I agree. I agree there's only um, one civic heart because that's where all the civic is all virtually is what's been said and open public places are the places like outside uh, wet calls, um, any other piazzas that we create around the place. It can only be one civic heart or one civic centre as far as I'm concerned and that's the way I read it in this. <coughs> yeah, Mr Chairman, I'd just like to toss in that um, we're talking about square or squares um, and I thought anything that was a public place and an improved public place in the public realm would have the term civic attached to it. It doesn't have to have an administration building there to not be civic. Well, that's well, it's in the public realm, so therefore it is civic. <coughs> no. Well, I mean, I'm only going on the dictionary definition of having, of, of having public buildings <coughs> around a civic square. So you've got to have public buildings around it, not commercial buildings around it. Well, I, I think most that's towns are running to me, it. and maybe I'm, I'm a dummy, because I live in Turing. But I thought that, that, uh, that um, when I went to Shanghai, um, there was only one civic square in Shanghai, and that's where the museum and the public buildings were. And that's got 14 million. What makes Taupo so unique where you're going to have half a dozen civic squares? Mr. Anderson, you, uh, what, I'm sorry, you had your hand up. Yeah, through the, through the chair, there's, there's, a, there's a very well-known um, planning or urban design term, which is pocket pack. Uh, which is used in urban areas which might assist in this discussion, that you have a civic square but you also have pocket parks. Uh, Pigeon Park in Wellington would be an example of a pocket park uh, which is in the public realm but it's not, uh, it's not classified as a civic square, it's, it's classified as a pocket park. Uh, so that might be a term that you could use to, to identify those sorts of additional areas. Yeah, I'm happy to leave the staff to sort that one out. I don't yeah. think we're going to get come to an agreement but I would like to raise one above that. <laughs> Um, circulation to reconnect the town centre and growth areas with the lakefront. Which growth areas? I think maybe we've got a, um, a displacement there. I think it's probably 
dare I put my neck on the line, it's probably to reconnect the town centre with the lakefront and take out and growth areas.